All right, good morning. If I could ask everyone to take their seats. And just sit here and look at the room for a second because it's so cool to see people live and in person. So let me start by saying good morning. My name is Michael Williams, I'm service president and CEO of United Way of Southeast Louisiana. And it's my honor to welcome you to United Way of Southeast Louisiana's 2021 annual meeting. We want to thank all of you for joining us for today's event. And while the setting might be a little bit different than last year, this year, um, we're grateful to have this opportunity to say thank you, to celebrate our collective wins and recognize the excellence in our work. Now, since we have some folks that are joining us virtually this year as well, hey, they're on Zoom, I'd like to take care of some housekeeping to get us started today so that we know exactly what to do, what to expect, and how to engage. And we expect the folks virtually to engage with us as we move along. As we move throughout the meeting, we welcome our virtual attendees to send words of encouragement, congratulations, aka a shout out to all those being recognized today. You can do that in the chat box. Just please be sure to select all attendees and panelists when you do, that way we can all celebrate together. And of course, if you're experiencing any technical issues, i.e. a dog barking in the background, you have to leave your screen, don't worry. We're recording this and we'll send it to you after the event so you can enjoy it later. Uh, now we want to learn a little bit about more about you, our attendees that are both here in the room and also over there on Zoom. And so, first of all, if you would just tell us what your connection is to United Way. Now, for folks that are on Zoom, you can just post it in the chat and tell us what that experience has been like and how long you've been connected to us. And for folks in the room, you can take a few seconds, look to the person to your right or left and say, my name is so-and-so, I've been involved X ways, and here's how long I've been, I've been involved. And so I know folks like Kathy can say it's been a long, long time that have been involved with United Way. So we'll take a minute and let you do that. <laughs> a long time. I can see everybody's having a blast with this one. And I can't see the chat right now, but I hope folks in the chat room are sharing their experience as well. All right. So if I could have your attention now, we knew that might be a can of worms we would open up. But if I could have your attention, because right now I'd like to acknowledge a few of our key stakeholders, which is a long list, and so please bear with me for all they do to support our United Way. I'm gonna first start with my United Way teammates, many of, or several of whom are in the room with us today. They were actually responsible for logistically making this happen. Um, I always say, you know, you know, teamwork makes the dream work, and, and none of this work is done by one single individual. We have a fantastic team that's here in the room, some on Zoom and some that are probably on PTO because they're trying to squeeze that in before the end of the month. I really want to thank them for their collective support and leadership. They are the best of the best. And Kathy, we can tell people United Way worldwide that, especially if they're watching with us today. Also, our elected officials um, who lend their support to advance our public policy um, agenda. Uh, Charmaine can attest to the fact that we have lots of legislators and elected officials out there that join us every year to champion our legislative agenda. And our leadership council that represent all the parishes that we, leadership councils represent all the parishes we serve from Pikeland, St. Bernard, St. Tammany, Tangipo, and Washington parishes in particular. The members of our Toko Society, those that give generously, generously to our United Way, especially our founder, the late Mr. C. Allen Favreau, um, who was just a dear, dear volunteer, longtime supporter of our United Way, an amazing person who first founded our, our Toko Society. And then our million dollar round table, Donors, folks that have chosen to invest significantly in our organization, including our founders, Bob and Cheryl Barrick, David Finley and Carlos Sanchez, John and Nathan Georges, Frank and Paulette Stewart, Jackie and the late Jane Wayne Leonard, and our newest member, who's very, very well known around the world, <coughs> Mackenzie Scott, or as I like to call her, Mac. <laughs> 
And then to our members of our Women United, Young Leaders United, Mission Ignition, and Retired United Affinity Groups, folks that are connecting with us through those groups, they can help us advance our efforts to try to eliminate poverty throughout Southeast Louisiana. In our partner agencies, we can't go a day without talking about the great work that you do and our other collaborative partners, because without you, the work simply would not get done. And then our top 60 most generous workplaces, we love you very, very much, because y'all lead by example. You run stellar campaigns, you get engaged as volunteers and advocates as well. I'll lead by example and show other companies what it's like to be the most generous company. So shout out to our top 60. And last but not least, the folks that I work for directly, our board of directors, who have been nothing short of stellar year in and year out, and especially over those past years we dealt with COVID-19 and its crippling effects, and all the committee chairs that work alongside our board um, that take up committee work to help us break down our work and get it done day in and day out. Can't say enough about all them. And of course, I want to thank all of you, like I did in the opening, who are committed to our mission of eradicating poverty throughout, say, throughout Southeast Louisiana. And to that end, I'd like to acknowledge a couple of staff members who share that same commitment. So much they've stuck with us for a pretty, pretty long time. And they're actually celebrating significant milestone anniversaries in their work with our United Way. So first I'd like to give a shout out, and she couldn't be with us today, but uh, Chiquita Lattimore, also known as Squeaky, I hope she's watching. Um, Chiquita celebrates 10 years with our United Way. Gosh, it feels like so much longer because for as long as I've been around almost, Chiquita's always been in my ear asking if we can leave early on Friday when the holiday's right around the corner. <laughs> AKA Squeaky. And then Pam Allison, who's here with us today in the beautiful blue dress. We saw her biggest cheerleader jump up first, Charmaine, because uh, I think we often talk about it, Pam is certainly the glue that holds together a lot of the work that we do in our public policy and advocacy um, area. So Pam, thanks for, thanks for sticking with us. 15 years just flew by, right? <laughs> now let's talk a little bit about our work, kind of while we're here, right? Um, our work has always been rooted in uh, our artwork has always been rooted in addressing symptoms of poverty and disparities, but we like the focus that comes with an equity mindset. And over time, we've evolved from the original community impact model to embrace systems change. We can honestly say that our United Way wrote the book on community impact a good many years ago. And while that was improved, it still wasn't targeted enough. But we also felt the momentum swell for leadership that would tackle complex and often controversial issues. And while we began to address more progressive problems over the past several years, we still weren't clear regarding what was ahead for our United Way. This led to a year long endeavor to gain purpose and clarity by seeking stakeholder and input. And in 2017, we, de we debuted our Blueprint for Prosperity, which I'm sure most of you have heard a great deal about. And our Blueprint's vision and mission is one with an intentional focus on systemic change and equity. You'll hear me say that a good bit today. And the blueprint came with a recognition that if we have an opportunity to lead and inspire others to join our efforts, or as Mary Ambrose, our chief impact officer, say, one of the four eyes has been a part of our strategic plan. But we've been specifically building on a decade of our evolving, evolving our leadership and capacity as a financial capability building, as financial capability building experts with a focus on closing the racial wealth gap. For today, we didn't talk about it that way, but now we do. And many of you have heard about our Alice Report, and it tells us financial parity would increase our state's GDP by $54 billion through massive asset ownership and growth among households of color. Let me say that one more time. Financial parity would increase our state's GDP by $54 billion, that's what it would be, through massive asset ownership and growth among households of color. And while we're make, we were making progress before the pandemic, we're even making more today by amplifying our efforts. And we've created over $16 million in community impact directly in response to COVID-19. And now we have an opportunity to capitalize on the, on the momentum by providing traditional support through more modern methods. Today, we still contribute to 60 plus nonprofit partners at pre-pandemic levels while expanding internal and innovative initiatives. 
So with everything that's happened to us, we've been able to maintain our support for our nonprofit partners. They're out there on the ground doing the work every day. And as we continue to evolve and adapt our work from more programmatic tactics, to targeted interventions, addressing unequal systems and structures, this is not new work for us, but it is time for us to renew our commitment to the work. But it must be bold, we must be bold. And it begins with a commitment from each of you, I'm gonna ask in a little bit, here today, and in the, in the room, and on Zoom. And if you're, and we're excited that you're gonna join us in this fight. And if you don't mind, you feel free to share your enthusiasm by typing, I'm in, in the chat room. Or for those in the room, you can just give me a thumbs up. Right, folks on Zoom, we got a lot of thumbs up in here in the room. So, here's where we're gonna break a minute. So I want to share with you some of the wins for 2020 and 2021. So it was so substantial, I had to have two pieces of paper to cover all of it. So shout out to Kirby Jane Nagel for helping keep me on track. But I want to start with our advocacy. Wins. Shout out to Charmaine, the glue and community and public policy for leading one of the most aggressive legislative sessions I think you've ever seen, right, Charmaine? Yeah. So let me just kind of round out some quick, some quick, uh, some quick examples. Sports betting uh, regulations were passed, including 25% to early care and education, up to $20 million. That's something new. <laughs> if Amy had daughter Freeman was here, she would be standing there applauding loudly because of the elimination of the pink tax. Finally. <laughs> Mandatory kindergarten to foster care bill of rights. Additional protections for mixed victims of domestic violence and sexual assault. Then we moved on to the police. Y'all can clap all you want, and you can chat, you can shout out in the chat room too. And then in response to COVID-19, we launched a partnership with 504 HealthNet vaccine hotlines, specifically targeting the Vietnamese and Spanish communities to democratize access to information and make sure that we address the misinformation and myths around COVID-19 and the vaccinations. We even held vaccination events with our partners to get the word out there. And then education, it's no secret, we've been at the education work for a long, long time. Uh, United for Early Care and Education, a quick call to our friends over at Loyola University College of Law, the Law Clinic and Agenda for Children, put in place an effort to help childcare centers claim over $3.6 million in forgivable loans through the Payroll Protection Program. This has been 70 centers that have benefited who many were sure could have potentially closed if we hadn't made that investment and saw that through. Now we're in phase four in supporting payroll protection program phase two for centers who want to apply for those resources. Uh, big fan of David Finley, Carlos Sanchez, so I have to give a shout out and celebrate the fact that the K Finley Summer Lucy Institute launched a year-round pilot in response to COVID-19 to do a few things. One is to stop or slow the slide. It used to be the summer slide, now we call it the COVID slide. But also strengthening summer learning through strengthening curriculums and programs within these centers. And currently we're working with 15 programs across 21 locations. And then for you North Shore people out there on Zoom or in the room, the North Shore Prosperity Center opening. We gathered a whole bunch of people. The first center of its type serving the North Shore, modeled after the J. Wayne Leonard Prosperity Center here in New Orleans. And it's our one-stop shop, one -stop shop approach to delivering financial capability building services, 11 different ones, all targeted helping build financial capability among our families. If you're a big fan of comics and the new Captain America, you'll be super excited to hear that we launched United for Grocery Store Workers which was supported by Anthony Mackey, son of New Orleans and the new Captain America and our friends over at NGG in New Orleans. <laughs> to offer all these parish grocery store workers one time, one time, $150 credit towards their energy bill, a little something to help out as people struggle. And if you're in Jefferson and St. Tammany Parish, you should celebrate with us the fact that the Louisiana Prisoner Reentry Initiative, or as my marketing people tell me, La Pre has hit, has hit major milestones. 100% of our participants in Jefferson Parish have not received 42% of 
participant secured, participants secured permanent employment, and 65% of them had their legal cases resolved by our partners. And we're advancing this work in St. Tammany as well. And I'm excited next year I'll be here to tell you even more about that. It's no secret the hospitality industry is a big part of who we are. It's a big part of our culture. So in response to the pandemic, almost immediately, I'd like to say faster than the federal government, no offense. <laughs> we launched hospitality, the Hospitality Cares Pandemic Response Fund with our partners at the Louisiana Hospitality Foundation. We, in partnership with the with Louisiana Hospitality Foundation, provided over $2.4 million in $500 grants to displaced hospitality workers who so were trying to figure out where they were going to get their next meal. 4,800. You should see the stories that we hear from folks that benefit that program. It makes you feel just extremely good about the work we're doing. And now, in phase two of, of Hospitality Cares, we're partnering to offer free civil. A civil aid, legal aid, and counseling services. So that work continues. And let's talk about a few big pivots. You know, the fish fry Fridays, which is a great, you know, we have to do things around food from where I'm here. This is our second year letting fundraiser supporting hospitality cares. But here's the upside 50 plus restaurants participated this year, raising over $12,000. That's a lot of fish fry. That's a lot of fish fry. And then a fan favorite for a lot of folks on the North Shore, red beans and rice takeouts. Used to be an in-person event. We started doing takeouts, raised over $16,000 for suicide prevention and mental health services. Now let me shift to workforce development. Now in partnership with our friends over the Greater New Orleans Inc., Michael Heck and his team, or as my team likes to say, Mike Two. <laughs> Sorry, I got that. <laughs> So pause for a second. My name's, my name's Michael. His name is Michael. We call him Mike too. But together we studied the digital, we studied the digital skills gap in, in Southeast Louisiana house workers. Those are asset limited income constrained employed. And we worked together to outline strategies around workforce education and the partners we need to work with, work with to begin closing that gap. And we identify, we're identifying real clients, real individuals that we can help as a result of that study and that research so we can help them connect with jobs that will pay a better wage. Now, I'm super proud of our staff employment and training program work. This has been a serious labor of love for our team, especially Jameen Dahmer. But to date, we've helped return over $1.7 million to local organizations that are offering workforce education and training services to folks that are SNAP eligible, eligible across our seven areas. That will be set to get translated to people getting jobs. They'll pay better wages as well. And hopefully they can live out the American dream like so many others, especially us in this room. And then can't help but give a shout out to our friends at Intergy, our friends at Hands On, around the launch of the United Way Hands On Intergy Volunteers. <laughs> Just this past May, we created over 300,000 impact through our partnership with DoorDash through the DoorDash meals and deliveries program. Also, let me talk a little bit about the hurricane relief efforts so much around our volunteer center operates around. You heard of this guy who plays football for the New Orleans Saints, Cam Jordan? Heard of Cam for? So we partnered with Cam in a GoFundMe to raise friend, funds for our friends in Southwest Louisiana and raise over $50,000 thanks to Cam just bringing attention to the fact that our friends to the West were struggling. And at the same time, raised almost $200,000 in additional donations in response to all the storms that we have faced over the past year. I remember somebody posted online somewhere that you know, if you live in Southeast Louisiana, you live, people ask you where you live, you say, I live in the Cone of Uncertainty. Fortunately for us, this past year, we dodged many of those bullets, but our friends in the East and West didn't. We were glad to help them out. In fact, you'll be super excited to know that in Lord donations alone, we had 312,000 items processed, in kind of good items. People that brought them to our office to try to help out more um, victims who were here in New Orleans. And at the Convention Center Resource Fair, we helped over 7,000 evacuees. That was all because of our partnership with HGMP and so on. And then there's our friends at BET, formerly known as Black Entertainment Television which established a partnership and working with six different United Way communities to address the disproportionate impacts that COVID-19 had on uh, Black communities. 
Collectively, that effort raised over $18.4 million to help those six cities. We being one of those. And I'm proud to say right here in New Orleans, 192,000 individuals were helped as a result of that single partnership. As I said before, we don't do this work alone. We work with our nonprofit partners. As a result, we were able to provide $1.9 million to 11 different partner organizations that are addressing issues and challenges around health, food access, financial assistance, student supports, and rent and mortgage assistance. That's what that is. And we're good. It used to be a top 10 list. Now it's top 12, so I got two more to go. And I talked about Mac before, our dear friend, Mackenzie Scott. Um, that gift for us was, I think, a true turning point. We were selected based on the merit of the work we do and the impact we create. And I want you to know that with those resources, we're gonna accelerate the impacts that we've been creating for years already through expanding our individual development account work, offering more written mortgage assistance, offering greater support to United for Early Care and Education so we can help out our desperately needed childcare centers and the Louisiana Prison Reentry Initiative, AKA LaPri. And also we're looking at opportunities right now to see what we can do to leverage those resources to specifically help black owned businesses while still offering programmatic relief to our grantees, making sure they have the resources they need. But the most important takeaway is out of 6,400 organizations that were evaluated, our United Way was selected among 383 other organizations. That's a huge testament to you and everybody that supports United Way. So, that's all of our wins, but I got a little quiz for you if you don't mind. Got a quick question. So how much impact, and you can answer in the chat, you can, you can type this in the chat, or somebody can yell out in the room if you want to. Um, how much impact do you know way create in response to COVID-19? I might've tipped you off a little earlier. Anybody gonna guess? 16 million? Come on, pay attention, awesome. This one I got right. This one I got it right in the chat. So you're right, $16 million in direct response to COVID-19. So um, once again, it's our honor to celebrate these wins with you today with our friends there on Zoom, the individuals who've all made it possible for us to do this work. And you know, I think throughout the day we've talked about remarkable individuals like yourselves, but we could not hold today's gathering of United Way stakeholders without pausing to remember a remarkable donor, volunteer, in person for that matter, Lisa Arsenal. Now, Lisa served as an employee campaign coordinator for United Way for EY, the EY United Way campaign for many years and always put her heart and soul into their United Way campaign. From volunteer projects and days of service, they were among the many ways Lisa engaged her coworkers in the EY United Way campaign. She knew the importance of connecting her coworkers to our mission through a more personal, hands-on experience. Now, earlier this year, EY, our United Way, and frankly, the entire community suffered a great loss when Lisa was tragically murdered. So if you don't mind, I'd like to ask that you join me in a brief moment of silence in her memory. Thank you. Now today, Lisa's family, including her son Brian and his cousin, are here with us today as we honor Lisa for her extraordinary efforts to improve Southeast Louisiana by presenting a new award named after Lisa to our Outstanding Employee Campaign Coordinator of the Year. And we're pleased to announce that we're we have selected and will give this inaugural award to Lisa Arsenault. The ECC, I mean, I'm sorry, the Lisa Arsenal ECC Award to Sheila McGuire from Canal Barge. Sheila, where are you? Sheila, would you come forward? And yeah, Brian, would you mind coming forward as we present this award to, oh to Sheila? <laughs> 
This will be your letter of recommendation. That was probably the most, I was most nervous there, so please bear with me. Once again, thanks, Brian, for, for being with us today. And Sheila, well deserved. Now, this is a little bit about Sheila, too, since she is our honoree for this award. You know, for those who don't know Sheila, our team knows her really, really well. You would always find her rallying the employees at Canal Barge through auctions, cook-offs, tailgate parties, and so much more. Her passion, which clearly showed through just a minute ago, if you know, way is contagious. Short story, she came up a minute ago and said, once I retire, I'm gonna let her break the nation because I really like to work with you anyway. I got you, I got you, she did. And she's always wanted to share her wealth of knowledge with other ECCs from all around the region. I know Tristan, you've, you've heard her share her ideas. So let's give her another round of applause. For this year. So I'm almost done with my part of today. Um, and as I welcome our 2019-2020 Board of Trustees Chair with Katz McCray to the stage, got a little bit of news. So every year we take a vote for the board to select what we consider to be a significant honor, and that is board member of the year. And hands down, our current chair, who's passing the gavel, Kathy McCray was selected by her peers to be this year's Board of Trustees uh, Member of the Year. So Kathy, as I welcome you to the stage, we have a small gift to you. Thank you. Thank you, Michael, our United Way board, our United Way staff, and all the United Way stakeholders for investing your time, your efforts, your dollars, and most importantly, your hearts in our mission to eradicate poverty in Southeast Louisiana. It is truly a privilege to stand before you all at our annual meeting and hi to our friends on Zoom um, to acknowledge some of the many people that lead us to the incredible accomplishments that Michael just outlined and more of the past year and introduce, you, introduce those who will lead us into the future. First, I would like to take a moment to recognize our newly elected members of our board of trustees. These members were elected electronically by vote of the United Way membership. For their first three-year term, we have Ken Flower, Shelly Meyer, IMA Dinkler, Beatrice Orlano, Ronnie Stone, and Ron McLean. And beginning their third and final three-year term, Norma Grace, Bob Kimbrough, Adrian Slack, and Michael Todd. So these folks not only give their time and effort to our United Way board, but you also see them around the community. And I wanna thank you all and welcome our new incoming board members um, to our United Way board. So thanks. I'd also like to recognize our executive committee for the 2021-22 year who no doubt have a great deal of insight to lend to our efforts in the year ahead. And I'm really looking forward to working with this new slate of officers in the coming year. Chair, Todd Smith. Vice Chair, Dr. Takesha Davis. Secretary, Derek Martin. Treasurer, Ted Ruddick. Governance Chair and Immediate Past Chair, yours truly. Uh, At-large members, Bob Kimbrough, Tondra LeMay, and Rick Young. So again, it's been an honor to call you colleagues and friends Thank you for your service to United Way, 
our community, and the people that we serve. What can I say about the past year that hasn't already been said? I certainly did not envision my year as board chair conducting meetings via Zoom or the pandemic and social justice movements spotlighting the economic and social inequities that we have been working with our partners to improve. I did not foresee the isolation that our friends and neighbors have felt with reduced social contact and the support system that we offer, often need it, or the bravery of our frontline workers in the medical industry and essential workers um, at groceries and transportation, all the folks that risk their lives every day to make our world and our communities to continue to run. At the same time, with all these difficulties, what an incredible year of compassion and people working together to improve our communities. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Our United Way of Southeast Louisiana was built for this moment. You heard Michael outline all the incredible achievements that happened this past year. And that was because of the work that was done around our blueprint for prosperity our collaborations with others. I mean, you, you saw all of, of your names out there, people on Zoom and new partners that we worked with this past year to truly make a difference in our community, to our friends, to our neighbors and our families. So our dedication in these collaborations such as the campaign for grade level reading, and LaCre, amongst many others, along with our advocacy work to fundamentally and structurally change the way that we face the issues of eradicating poverty. All of this, all of this, our United Way would not have been able to seize the moment and create this incredible impact without the staff, without the volunteers, without our community partners out there. So again, I wanna thank you from the bottom of my heart for all that we all do together to make this collective impact. Not only are we thinking about what needs to be done today by getting money into folks, into hands of folks that need it, but how we fundamentally change our future to position ourselves for today and tomorrow as we look towards eradicating poverty. And I would like to share with you for just a few minutes how we are moving forward from today to continue to improve. We were part of a United Way worldwide diversity, equity and inclusion pilot program with five other United Ways around the country to further our work in this area. We want to partner with others in our community to continue to listen, to learn, and fight for more equitable outcomes for all. We had a board workshop in person, yay, at the beginning of the month to take stock of where we are and how we will move into the future. So even though we have many successes to celebrate, eradicating poverty is a big mission. And we need to get at the root causes of poverty and continue with our whole systems approach. We are not your grandparents' united way. We know we need to continue as an organization to make a positive impact on our community and Louisiana. So if I think back to when I started with United Way through workplace campaigns some 40 years ago and listen to what Michael has outlined, how far we have come through our work with partners, advocacy, and collaboration, we truly are making an impact. I am so very proud of our board and the United Way staff who embody our mission, and I couldn't be prouder to stand beside such wonderful and amazing people. So thank you all. It's been a privilege and honor to serve as your board chair. And with that,
It's time to celebrate a few more outstanding organizations and individuals who also demonstrate what it means to live united day in and day out. Our 2020-21 Live United Award winners. Live United speaks to the core of our United Way's philosophy. It's the direction we work together to improve the common good within our community. When we are united, we are working together to solve problems that destabilize our communities. Lack of education, unstable sources of incomes, and health problems. When we are united, we can make an impact greater than we ever could achieve alone. These first two award winners have quickly demonstrated what it means to live united as first year campaign cabinet members. They have fully embraced our mission and serve United Way advocates across the hospitality industry. Each of them donated personally, corporately, and ran employee campaigns, even though this industry is suffering greatly. These outstanding individuals chose a difficult year to join our campaign cabinet, but have fully embraced the work and are responsible for the great deal of success in this challenging years. Please welcome our volunteer of the years, volunteers of the year, Ralph Mahana of Windsor Course and Travis Teague from the High Eccentric French Quarter. Thank you. While, while we're on the topic of outstanding individuals, we must include this year's public policy award winner. This individual gives his personal resources and brings new donors and advocates to the table to join our fight for a more equitable Southeast Louisiana. His philanthropic support of our efforts expand access to early care and education across Louisiana has had tremendous impact in helping low-income households afford the high quality care for their children while also allowing parents to work and create better lives for their families now and in the future. From foster care to hospitality workers and generating support to implement a living wage, there is no ask too big or too small that he is unwilling to take on to improve the lives of children and family in our region. Please join me in congratulating Bill Hammett, our 2020-21 Public Policy Award winner. Bill couldn't be with us, but thank you so much. Okay, so let's shift gears to recognize our winner for Outstanding Communications. This publication and its exceptional staff helped raise awareness around the extraordinary impact our staff donors, volunteers, and advocates generated last year. From the early days of their fledgling podcast, recognizing Michael as one of the top CEOs of 2020 and extraordinary in-kind advertising deals. We love working with this outstanding team. It is my honor to award Biz New Orleans, not only Michael's favorite magazine, but also this year's award winner for outstanding communication. <laughs> That's okay, and whoever your photographer is, I'd love them because they make Michael look even more amazing. Yes, I'm looking at Now we've celebrated enormous advancements in our Louisiana Prisoner Reentry Initiative. Much of that work would not be possible without the help of our 2020-21 Community Impact Funding Partner, 
When we approached this Paris leadership to garner support for LaPri, they immediately recognized its value and invited United Way SELA to present to the entire parish council to request funding. Not only did they vote to provide the funding $100,000 a year for three years, they also invest in LaPri public service announcement to raise more awareness and support this initiative. Please congratulate this year's community impact funding partner, the Jefferson Parish Council, represented by Council Member Lee. Thank you. Let's continue in recognizing our partners and honoring those who have achieved stellar results related to our mission to eradicate poverty. Our first Community Impact Service Award goes to an organization strongly committed to anti-poverty advocacy work and provides sound analysis of state fiscal issues to promote economic prosperity, a rising standard of living, and the opportunity for all residents to reach their highest potentials. Their reports on public policy helped the United Way and our partners successfully advocate for major wins for Alice families throughout the 2021 session. Let's give a big round of applause for our first service partner award winner, the Louisiana Budget Project, accepting on behalf of the Louisiana Budget Project, Jan Muller. All three of the second award winners funded program received a perfect score on their grant reviews and reported a remarkable 183% participation rate compared to their target goal. This organization promotes growth and resilience to improve the quality of life for children and their families, the elderly and community members with disabilities. We are proud of our partnership and their commitment and leadership to eradicate poverty in one of the most underserved communities in Southeast Louisiana. Our second service partner award winner of 2020-21 is the Plaquemines Community Care Center Foundation. And now for our final award, our not so hidden hero this year, our not so hidden this year, hero award. Typically, we surprise these award winners, but of course, this year is slightly different. This award recognizes individuals who go above and beyond their service to United Way, yet the public is often unaware of their outstanding efforts. These individuals realize the importance of United Way's work and help us get that work done without any need for thanks or praise. But today, we're changing that. I'm honored to, this year to recognize Brad, Brad Fleming for his support to our resource development team and finance and operations committee, committee, and Barry Hadley of Barry Hadley Screen Printing and Embroidery for his work with our marketing and communication team as this year's Hidden Heroes.
So as you see demonstrated by all these awards, it really does take a village to help make our villages all better. I really truly appreciate everybody that has won an award and all of those individuals that support our mission day in, day out. And now I'd like to welcome a man who deserves all the accolades and recognition for his efforts to make this year's campaign a major success, our campaign cabinet chair, Marcus Brown. Thank you, Kathy and Michael. Um, you all have had the opportunity to have a review of some incredible outcomes over the past year. And uh, those outcomes are powered by the vision of the United Way. They're powered by the work that you all are willing to do, the commitment that you all are willing to make. But they're also powered by resources and funding and money. And, uh, and I had the privilege this year of uh, chairing the campaign cabinet. Uh, more importantly, I had the privilege of working with some incredible people who are willing to give their time, their resources, and their expertise for the benefit of powering what this organization does for the people across the South, Southeast region. And so first, I'd like to say thank you to those campaign cabinet members. You know who you are. You stepped up. You gave us your contacts, which were critically important. You gave us your time. And in many of you, the companies, the individuals, the foundations, you gave the money and the resources. Uh, thank you to the United Way team. Uh, Michael talks about the incredible efforts by the team. They are remarkable. I mean, I have worked with a lot of really talented people, but in the space that they're in, as McKenzie Scott recognized with a $10 million gift, they are amongst the best. And so uh, we want to take an opportunity today to address and acknowledge those workplaces that have had the most impact. Uh, the campaign cabinet had some really incredible highlights over the past year. And I want to just hit some of those highlights very quickly before I go into recognizing the individual companies uh, for, their, for their contributions. Uh, of course, the Intergy Corporation, where I work every day, uh, we certainly uh, are supportive and we want to power these efforts. And I keep putting that power word in there. Uh, it's intentional. Uh, I, I, I want to thank my friends and colleagues there uh, for over a million dollars of, of support for the United States. Hancock Whitney Corporation, more than a $50,000 gift by Hancock Whitney. Uh, Walmart, a 58% increase in giving throughout the region. Now that's an incredible feat in, in, in the face of what uh, we all were up against this past year. Keller Foundation grant, $30,000 unrestricted. LCMC Health increases overall campaign by 28%. Sanderson Farms grew its campaign by 15%. Phillips 66 grew by 7%. Would have been nice, you know, if it had been 6%, but you know, it's like six is all the way across. So, LOS Freeman grant, $100,000. Uh, Pan American Life Insurance Group grew its campaign by 16%. New Orleans Hotel and Lodging Association, Association, corporate and personal gifts from members to continue the work of the hospitality cares. I know Ralph has just acknowledged, I mean, uh, they did incredible work at a time when you all know that people were not traveling, they were not staying in hotels, they were not eating in restaurants, and they did not stop, they stepped up. Uh, new campaigns, Mallory Bank, we want to thank them for joining us. Women United secured the highest revenue ever in their 19-year existence. So it was a great year for Women United. And we welcome 26 new Tocqueville Society members at our first 10, and our first $10 million roundtable member, of course, Mac. <laughs> she, doesn't, she doesn't know me, but yeah. <laughs> And with this such tremendous progress, it's no wonder we're able to today to announce the prestigious ranking of the top 10 most generous workplaces in the 2020-2021 year. As I reveal each workplace, will a representative please join Michael over here to, in the front to accept your award. We'll also join together at the conclusion of the meeting to take group photos. In the number 10 spot, our friends from Washington Parish 
and the international people, although, although they were unable to host their annual golf tournament, employees rose to the occasion and they gave generously. Is there a representative from international paper? <laughs> Coming in at number nine is Hancock Whitney, whose corporate and employee giving will make an extraordinary impact in the year to come. Hancock Whitney. At number eight, we have Shalmet Refined LLC, PBF Energy. We also had to reimagine, who also had to reimagine their campaign this year, but still demonstrated a remarkable commitment to this community. Philip 66 Alliance Refinery takes this number seven spot. And coincidentally, their employee giving grew by six plus one percent, G percent. <laughs> And rounding out the first half of this list is UPS at number six, whose employees face perhaps the busiest year ever and still stepped up all over the region to give. Uh, number five is joining us virtually today, uh, Freeport McLaren, whose employees also overcame significant challenges and continue to give generously. Number four belongs to Pan American Life Insurance Group, which blew past uh, last year's campaign and with a 16% increase in this year's giving had a remarkable year. Pan American Life. Taking home the bronze medal at number three is Valero uh, Moro Refinery, who still managed to host their legendary special events and increase those revenues by more than 15%. Sure. <laughs> That's the shot you want, okay. And here we go to the final two spots. At number two belongs to the workplace that runs a model campaign year in and year out with their famous auction and golf tournament. We would like to recognize Shell. And finally, at number one, and I'm only slightly partial to this fantastic team of employees in the workplace, they demonstrated extraordinary giving and volunteerism over the past year, uh, my friends and colleagues at Energy Corporation.
Uh, Once again, please meet us at the step in repeat immediately following uh, this event and we'll take additional photos. Uh, before I leave, leave as your campaign chair, it is my honor to introduce this year's campaign video and the brave individuals who shared their stories of struggle and triumph with us, all to bring more individuals to our fight for a stronger, more equitable Southeast Louisiana. Turn your attention to the video, please. I think what's really important and why I've been connected with United Way for so long is that it always seemed to be there when people needed it the most. These are some of the toughest times our United Way has ever seen. Jobs have been lost. Educators and parents worry about their children. Families are fighting to stay in their homes. United Way is getting more calls for help than ever. We lost our health insurance two weeks after we were all laid off. I didn't really know what to do. My son was scheduled for his second club foot surgery. And honestly, at that time, we were like, oh, it's fine. It'll just be a couple weeks, and then the restaurants will be back open again. We were lucky enough to get government aid, health care, which kept us in PT, but his foot was relapsing more and more. I get those phone calls with parents who just need their children to go somewhere so that they can work, because there's so many facilities and centers trying to do their best to serve all these families, and we need support. If there's no funding, then who's winning? No one is. Anytime you try to save, every little thing's gonna come up. You know, your car is gonna break, you're gonna need to buy like your kids new clothes. You know, that's just life. But with rent going up and up and up, it was getting more and more difficult. The choice became find a way to buy or find a way to move someplace else. But without the help of the United Way funding, I don't think we'd be where we are today. We're able to open our doors back, take in more students, continue with the high standards of health and safety, as well as the high standards of early childhood education. I'm really happy that we found United Way. That help is there as a hand up and not a hand out. Sitting in the airport, scrolling through Facebook, the Hospitality Cares kind of ad pops up for crisis grants. Honestly, I was like, what do I have to lose? It took a week. We got the phone call of the approval for the grant. It's been a blessing. The last year highlighted the importance of taking care of each other, just what United Way has always done. There's no shame in asking for help, especially when you have someone there saying, I want to help. To have that weight lifted, just to know that someone is helping you was such a relief. Every dollar, every penny makes a difference in these young lives. And so it's so important to give because you're giving to a young child who can be something amazing. Rebuilding isn't a matter of going back to where we were. It's reimagining how we can be better. Strong communities need a strong united way. Your support will help us ensure health, education, and financial stability for all. Join us. Together, we can live united. Is a man who we just saw in the video has a clear vision of the future of the United Way. In 2021, 2022, Chair of the United Way Southeast Louisiana Board of Trustees, Mr. Todd Smith. Good morning, and, and I'd like to say, Marcus, thank you. I mean, this has been a year that none of us imagined 16 months ago uh, what 2020 and 2019 would look like. But you stepped up, and obviously, from the results we can see, uh, you were there for us and want to say thank you. Just wow. You know, this is, uh, this is humbling. And uh, my, my employees know I always have a saying that you don't want to be the guy who follows Phil Jackson in Chicago. You want to be the guy who follows the guy who follows Phil Jackson in Chicago. <laughs> Well, now I find myself in, in the unenviable position to be following Phil Jackson, and that's bad. 
So Kathy, thank you as well. You know, as I, as I stand here and I think about United Way and I think about my involvement with United Way, I have to reach way back. And uh, it's gonna be a little bit of a personal story. Uh, first, my, my, my uncle years ago, when I was a kid, was a loan executive to United Way, Southeast Louisiana. Uh, he worked for the federal government and uh, he was a loan executive for years. His name was Ray Bozeman. And uh, Uncle Ray was one of these guys, he was a, he was a renaissance man. Um, he played golf, you know, back, I'm 59. So back when I was a kid, Ray played golf. And there weren't a lot of black guys playing golf back then, but Ray did it. Ray was, uh, he took archery. He was a photographer. He was a singer. Uh, he was a, had a beautiful uh, voice. In fact, he would tell you, he went to Booker T. Washington High School here in New Orleans. And he would tell you that they said he was the second best tenor out of Booker T. Washington the first being Garrett Morris. Now, you didn't have to prompt Ray to say that. I mean, he, he would offer that up freely. So uh, Ray, you know, he retired from the federal government and as part of his, his, his makeup, his DNA his service was something that he was just naturally called to. And he became a reserve police officer in OPD for years. In fact, he, he reached the level of cap. Last year, we lost Ray to COVID. And, uh, you know, for my family, that was a tough blow because he was that guy. He was a guy that all my, my cousins, uh, his kids, we all looked up to. But in his life, what we learned was a life of service. And so my association with United Way goes back to that time when Ray was actually a lone executive to United Way. So as I stand here before you and I think about what we face this year, I'm really excited about the possibilities and I really feel indebted to Raymond. I feel indebted to everybody in this room. And I feel indebted to the city of New Orleans. I grew up here. I grew up in a little area called Desire. I don't know many of you know the uh, Desire community, but that's where I grew up. And my parents were both people who emphasized service. They wanted us to do things. They wanted us to get involved. And if they were both here with me today, I would thank them. And they know I'm thanking them now because I thank them every day. But as we look forward to next year, one of the things I'd like to say is that last year really showed the need for United Way. If you think about all of the things that happened, and these things happened at the drop of a hat. I remember it was March 13th when we told our employees, hey, you guys are gonna be working from home. And then you started to see the ripple effects of the, the pandemic. And it really laid bare some of the issues that United Way had already been working on. And what we've realized through this time is that there's never been a time where United Way is more needed, where we look at the inequities in, the, in our systems, uh, the need, and then the theme for next year, what I'd like to, to, to impart upon you said, let's imagine the possibilities. Imagine a region in which people have an opportunity to grow and prosper. Just think what that would do to kids coming up, to all of the problems that ail us, all of the things that we sit around and talk about, what if we can fix this? What I like about United Way is that we're looking at the root causes of solving those problems. And to me, that is probably the highest compliment I can pay to an organization. And I'm looking forward to working with each and every one of you, the staff, my fellow board members, my executive committee, and helping move our region forward. So, you know, I'd like to say thank you for entrusting me with this. Um, it's a humbling experience. I'm excited. Again, I'm following Phil Jackson. So I don't know if there are any Tim Floyd fans out there, but that's a basketball reference. <laughs> but I'm really looking forward to it. And I have to say that New Orleans and the Southeast Louisiana region, the sky's the limit. We just have to realize that. So in my excitement, one of the things I, I'd like to say is that um, this year coming up will be a testament to the work that United Way has done. We have a blueprint. You know, if you're building a home, you have to have a blueprint. We have a blueprint. And that blueprint is based upon what we know are the needs of our community, our constituents. And so it's really exciting to be a part of, of moving that forward. So again, thank you. And uh, I'd like to say thank you for joining us today as we've celebrated the year's accomplishments, new board leadership, and members recognized our Live United Award winners.
and top 10 most gener generous workplaces. We will continue to fight for those most vulnerable among us in our community, but in order to do so, we need your help. If I leave you today with one thing, I want you to understand the impact that your gift can make in our community. When you give to United Way, you help more children succeed in school, more families lead healthy lives, more households become financially stable. Together, we make more impact than any one of us could do alone. We hope you join us in our fight to eradicate poverty throughout Southeast Louisiana. And again, thank you and imagine the possibilities. All right, so that concludes this portion of the annual meeting and we'll adjourn, I think, right around the corner for breakfast. And everybody, of course, on Zoom, enjoy breakfast. <laughs> oh, and I talked to you in, uh,